Hey guys, welcome back. Carter, Bitsy Trippin. We're going to get into something different here. This is normally a GPU channel. However, we do have an S19J Pro. I think that's what this one thing is. Let me check here. Yes, it is an S19J Pro. Just verifying. Uh, Bitmain does a whole bunch of different things with these numbers. There are S19s, S19 Pros, S19 Pro Js, S19J Pros, which is what this one is. Uh, we're going to do uh, something a little different on this one. We're going to break it down first. We're, one of the things that you get when you order one of these units is they recommend that you open it up, pull the hash boards out, and validate that one of the heat sinks have not broken loose in transit and shipping. Now, I know most people are like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do that, bros. I don't know if I'm going to break something. However, we're going to show you how easy this is. We've done it already a couple times just to make sure that we had it down before we go and show you guys. So we're gonna take you through that step by step. So before that, we're gonna to jump to our sponsor and then we'll get into this. The centralization is one of the most important factors in a global cryptocurrency network. Bitcoin's proof of work functions due to the exceptional security provided by the miners of the network. Today's sponsor is Compass Mining, a company with a customer focused experience, providing a tailored approach to purchasing, hosting, or even an at-home option, allowing anyone the opportunity to participate. If this interests you, head over to compassmining.io. All right, we're back. So we're gonna pull in BBT Todd here, and we're gonna pull BBT Ray in here, and then I'm gonna narrate, essentially, and give you guys a close-up to this unit, all the different screws, and then kind of with the button that releases the top and all that work. I'm just, we're going to walk you guys through it. So we will, uh, let's get into this. All right, Ray, you need to take that top screw on the cover plate and just loosen it a little bit just so that you can push the button and let the free that plate there. Exactly. Yeah, and underneath here is where the brains of the ant miner is. So you there is like a Raspberry Pi looking thing up the top there. There is an extra cable entry for what looks like another hash board there and then the bus bar which is just back towards the back towards ray has a it was where the electricity is coming through so the power supply there's right there uh comes across that and down into the hash boards so you take that first part off and then we're going to start to transition to start to take the four screws off of the front panel there that will allow us to see the actual bus boards it will uh, allow us to actually see the hash boards now any key things that you could think of todd as ray pulls these off just don't lose them don't lose them <laughs> have it just over a have it just over a uh table put them in the order that you take them out yeah, when you're putting this back on too, this is one of the things that uh, we were doing is you don't want to screw them all the way back on when you're actually putting this back on. You want to just barely put them on uh, to get it nice and set up. And then you just, you'll put them on, you know, tighten them down after they're all in. You know, that way you just don't make it more difficult when you're starting to put them back on that you don't misalign the, and you know, over thread. Then the last screw you want to hold on to the fans just so that it doesn't doesn't drop. So. There we go. And that magnetic screwdriver. I'll let you. Then that piece. Now just rotate the, the fans around. Oh, and. The next step that you want to do is the that bus bar that we were talking about. There's two screws in each uh, board. You want to take those screws out. Yes, don't you, you when you're doing this, obviously, you know, you don't want to have this plugged in. <laughs> so that that bus bar is hot if this thing's plugged in. So you don't want to do that. You want to keep everything unplugged, keep it safe. And you'll get all 
six of these screws all the way off and then that is what releases the ability to pull each of these out all right so next up is is there's that white cable that's on top there's a little clip that's holding it into the socket you want to squeeze that and then pull it up and out of the there you go there you go all right now the next step is you can grab on to the far one of the far the the ones furthest away from the power supply the bus bar and not the bus bar but the you want to reach into the unit and grab the board but grab it by the heat sinks don't grab it by the board itself and then pull that out If only Todd was talking into a microphone. If I was talking. But the idea to grab it, grab it by the heat sinks is that that way you're not leaving your oil and stuff on the on the board itself. And therefore, you know, that oil will eventually heat up uh, when it's running. So that's the idea. And the other thing is all you have to do is just inspect to make sure that these heat sinks are secure, which these are. Um, they're is a possibility during shipment that something could get a jarred and, and one of these heat sinks would become unglued. And at that point, we would have to send it out to uh, service and have that fixed. So then we wanna go ahead and we wanna pull out the other two and do the same thing as far as inspection. the final one all right Ray now if you can the, on the back of the power supply there are two screws if we can go ahead and remove those two screws we're just opening up this power supply just to give you guys kind of a look inside now typically what's required when you first get one of these and you know you could just take that back plate off and you could do a visual inspection to make sure that you haven't had any heat sinks come loose because again you always run into an issue that when you are taking these things apart that you could be the cause of something having an issue by taking them out and bumping them into something all right so now what you want to do is you want to grab that top thing and you want to slide it towards you and then pull it up yeah and the, the reason why we took this off is that there's a few wires up on top that you want to just make sure that they're you know firmly connected and that nothing is you know moved during shipment as well that's as far as that we're going to go as far as tearing down the power supply there's a few more screws that are on the power supply that we could probably open it up even further but we're going to leave that alone all right now we're going to go ahead and just put everything back together in reverse order and take you guys back through that All right, guys, thanks again for watching that one. We wanted to show you a teardown. And the next video, we're going to show you guys it running. We're going to take some thermals on it. We're going to take some audio and kind of give you an idea of how this thing starts up and starts oscillating a little. And then we'll get to a peak when it gets to a certain temperature. And then we'll bring it back down audio wise. Just wanted to make sure you guys have that kind of understanding if you're gonna put this in your house and how loud it's gonna get. But again, hopefully the teardown kind of gave you guys some guidance there and just got you started if you were gonna take this journey on having a Bitcoin miner at your house. So again, like, subscribe, and we will catch you guys on the next one, thanks.